everyone, it's Chef Spencer Watts here with Atlas Steak and Fish, and I couldn't be more excited because we're celebrating food and wine with none other than Mark Berenger and the Phantom Creek family. I'm pretty excited. Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. My name is Mark Berenger. I'm the director of winemaking for Phantom Creek Estates in Oliver, BC. And uh, you might recognize my last name from a little brand down in the Napa Valley. I've been a winemaker down there for over 35 years, but I've come up here to BC to make some wines in the Okanagan Valley. And I'm really excited to see some food and wine pairings that we're gonna do here with Chef Spencer tonight. So we're gonna lead off tonight with a Chardonnay from our Becker Vineyard. Uh, the Becker Vineyard's where our winery is actually located in the South Okanagan, and it's one of the warmest sites that we have. It's a very sandy soil, very well drained, and it gets drenched with a ton of sunlight. That brings some really ripe flavors into the Chardonnay, like stone fruit, get some ripe peach, and a little bit of apricot. We put a light amount of oak on it just to give it a little bit of toasty body. And then also it sits surly on the yeast to get a little bit of doughy yeasty quality and build some texture and some mouthfeel into the wine. So it should pair really well with what chef's prepared tonight. I've never wanted a glass of wine so bad in my <laughs> life after all that. Sitting with Mark Barringer, that's so cool. Uh, we were talking earlier and you used the word elegant about the Chardonnay and I couldn't agree more. And the first course is elegance. It kind of sets the tone for this wine dinner. And it's centered around a panna cotta, which has the texture of eating a cloud, if you can imagine that. And it's just lightly kissed with gorgonzola cheese. It's not super heavy, it's just light. There's a little kiss of vanilla in it. Um, and then there's a lot of freshness like in the wine, kind of echoes that with some fresh crunchy endive. Uh, you were mentioning fruit, so we tried to echo that as well with some fresh brown figs. We're still kind of at the tail end of fig season, which is really exciting. And then we bring the dish down into a little deep waters and get really flavorful because I think it's super fun with a, a balsamic truffle honey, a little white balsamic vinaigrette and a sesame almond brittle, which gives it and some extra sweetness that goes with the Christmas really well uh, and some nice crunch. And uh, I think it's a great start uh, to this dinner, both for the wine and the dish. They kind of have the same color. Uh, when it comes out, you kind of just feel all warm inside. I'm excited. I can't wait to try it. So the second course is a seared scallop, uh, and this is where things heat up a little bit, not only with the wine, but with the food. Uh, Mark had a great tasting note about uh, the next wine. He said there's a lot of texture in it, uh, and that's the same for this next dish. From the buttery uh, scallop to the little crunchy bean and bacon, and then the dish has a beurre blanc, which gives it such a nice mouthfeel. It's like a luxurious butter sauce. And then a nice jammy apple chutney, just made with some green apple, a little touch of vinegar, a little touch of sugar. Uh, it's an explosion of flavors and textures. And I think it's fun because it's, it's fish, but with a light red wine. Delicious. So the wine that we're pairing with it is actually a Pinot Gris. Uh, it's made in an Alsatian style. Uh, we have a consulting winemaker, Olivia Umbrecht, who's from Alsace, and uh, we kind of mimic that style that they make in that part of France. We use these large oval casks, they're 3,300 liter Austrian oak cask, and the juice goes straight into these tanks. They're fermented naturally with the yeast that came in with them. Uh, we leave them in there in a reductive state, actually up to about a year and a half. So it wow. sits in there on the leaves, builds a lot of texture, builds a gets a little bit of oak characteristic, but it's a large vessel, so it's not too impactful, but it really retains the nice acidity of the wine. It actually goes through the secondary or malolactic fermentation that would normally create a buttery characteristic, but it actually gets consumed by the yeast that are in there. So it leaves a lot of the fresh fruit, a lot of that really nice uh, tension with the acidity, but builds a ton of texture from being on the yeast for almost a year and a half. So that yeast breaks down because all that glycerol is a nice richness and body to the mouthfeel. So it almost comes across perceived as sweet without actual sweetness. It's bone dry, but it's really textural and it should be great with the sauce that you described. I mean, that buttery note is yeah. right through. Amazing. Yeah. The wine for the third course is our estate Merlot. Our estate wines are actually blended from multiple sites around the South Okanagan. So we can pull from our Golden Mile bench or also from the Black Sage bench. It allows us to create wines with a little more depth, a little more character. So this actually comes from our Becker Vineyard, um, which is on Black Sage and also our Kobo Vineyard, which is in the Golden Mile, brings a little more acidity, but it really makes a nice balanced wine that has that jammy fruit from the warmer side of the valley, but all that tension and acidity that comes from the cooler side. So I think we both agree that this wine performs almost like an old world wine. So that's where we went with the pairing steak and potatoes. For the steak, we're gonna do a cab steak 
cooked over our Jasper charcoal fired ovens with a black strap molasses marinade. And things get really fun when you cook with uh, molasses. It gets these really nice dark charred notes and the sweetness is amplified. For the potato, it's a palm puree kissed with a little bit of truffle and I highly suggest the add-on of the summer truffle. They're just so fragrant, so beautiful and go so great with the wine. Uh, the dish is finished with some asparagus and a little drop of demi and it's unctuous. It's got body and attitude. I think it's perfect with the wine. Who wouldn't want to add truffle? Right, right. I mean, come on. <laughs> Pick me. <laughs> so the fourth course is a lamb rack with petit cuvee. And in the petit cuvee is uh, Cab Franc. And Cab Franc is known for its natural spice notes. So we've kind of mirrored that with this Napa Valley rub that has lavender and cinnamon and fennel. But the balance of all those crazy flavors hums really nicely with the wine. Uh, so the lamb is salted in that. Uh, cooked and then beside it we did like a Sunday dinner volivant which has puff pastry and some nice um, roasted vegetables in it and it kind of gives you that Sunday feel with that wine uh, and pomegranate gastrique so it's got the perfect balance of fruit and bitter and I think with that Napa Valley uh, salt mixture rub with the lavender in it and the petit cuvee uh, that, that's going to be bite of the night for me. Sounds great. Uh, we have a, our, our petit cuvee, as uh, Spencer mentioned, it's a really nice blend of about half Cabernet Franc, then it has about a quarter of it being Merlot, we even has some Petit Verdot in there, and it just makes a really great kind of almost Cheval Blanc style of a blend. Uh, the area that we're in has a lot of natural sage around, so it's going to bring in a lot of that natural terroir. It has a light herbal note that's there. We want to have it present because it is our terroir, but we also have a lot of nice bright fruit that kind of goes in there with it. Brings a little bit of natural acidity as well to give it some tension. And with this rub mix that you're talking about, having all those nice flavors in there, it's gonna really pair well with the natural terroir that's in the wine. So it's gonna be a really exciting match to see. And for our final course of the night, we've brought a nice brand new rosé. It's our 2021 rosé. It's actually really the first wine that I've been able to complete all the way through since my arrival about a year ago. Amazing. Uh, with my new team. And it's really a special wine. It's been really exciting to bring out. It's pressed direct from the fruit. We use the red grapes that are natural to our area. So it's a little bit darker in color than most rosés. has kind of a dark salmon color. And it brings a lot of intensity and structure because we're working with varieties like Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah, and Merlot in order to make this blend. But rather than bleed it off from a tank we're making a big red wine with, we actually direct press it early. We keep the alcohol low and we get really nice light color into it. We fermented about two thirds of it in uh, the Foudre oval cask to build some texture. And then we did about a third of it in stainless steel to maintain the crispness and the acidity and the brightness of the fruit. So you get a lot of this red strawberry raspberry fruit, all this really beautiful texture. Bone dry, but comes across as this really sweet textural wine. And it should be really great with the dessert. I, you say rosé and it just makes you smile. It feels like a celebratory glass of wine and we wanted to have fun with the last course and so we did the broken flower pot and we wanted to play not only with the berry notes that you said but the crispness and the sweetness so I think of chocolate and I think of fruit and so instead of doing one we did both so it's a light chocolate cheesecake with strawberry uh, raspberries and then we put little touches of mint in it it kind of gives you that garden freshness it's really celebratory with the rosé and I think the last pairing is just fun it's it's super disarming. It's gonna make you feel like a kid again. And I guarantee the wine and the dish will put a smile on your face. So on behalf of myself, Mark Berenger, the Phantom Creek family, and everybody at Atlas Steak and Fish, we really hope you enjoy this experience. We put a little bit of our hearts, our soul, and a lot of love into it. We hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoyed making it. Thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed this opportunity to come and be part of this dinner. So thank you everybody for participating. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, you went red. Nice moves. <laughs>